Hello and welcome. The goal of this podcast is to get listeners connected with others in the sports industry because they say it's all about who you know and now you know us. Well, hello and welcome, Constant Sports Podcast listeners. Today we're joined by John Campione. Uh, thanks for joining us today, John. Yeah, thanks for having me, Connor. It's much appreciated. I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, awesome. So we'll, uh, we're going to kind of dive in a little bit here. So John's been, you know, an academic advisor, admissions counselor. He's worked in a number of uh, director of admissions roles. He's got an extensive background and we were talking off air a little bit and he's a big sports business fan, the industry. So we're, we're happy to have him today and give us kind of maybe some, some insider trips, uh, tips and tricks on how to you know get into school and some things to you know, help your, uh, your uh, information stand out and whatnot. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the sport business program at Temple, it's its fantastic. I'm an alum of Temple University. I uh, got my undergrad degree in education from the school and have been aware of the sport business program for quite some time now. It's one of the most unique and uh, committed and well-diversified programs that the university has to offer. Yep, and, that, and that's why we reached out. We, we saw some of the great things that the alum have done and the different professors. So we're excited to dive into that today. And just touching on that, could you give kind of the viewers and listeners just a background, a history of the program, how long it's been around, kind of stuff like that? Yeah, sure. So the Sport Business Program is in the School of Sport, Tourism, and Hospitality Management, or STHM, as is most commonly referred to at Temple. Um, and the school was founded as a separate college in uh, in the mid to late 90s. Um, but the commitment and mission of the school was to make sure that there was a heavy emphasis on experiential learning experiences. And then with sport business, taking advantage of the fact that uh, we are in such a rich sports oriented environment uh, in the Philadelphia metropolitan area. Um, I'm not since this school was founded, but in the past, you know, what about 12 or so years now, Philly has been um, one of about only seven or eight cities in the country that is fortunate enough to have all five major sports organizations. Uh, and Temple and the sport business uh, program is lucky enough to have connections, which all of these program uh, with all of these organizations and that's really allowed the program throughout its last 20 years to hone in on diversifying the learning experience and making sure that students get that hands-on touch point while they're in the program. Um, and since then, students have gone on, and I can explain it more later, but students have gone on to work for all five professional sports organizations in the city. Um, and it really created a unique environment for the student population. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I always love, you know, this, there's only, like you said, only so many cities where they have, you know, all the major sports leagues, all the, you know, big teams coming in. So that's awesome that the programs, you know, is right in the heart of that. And is that one of kind of the selling points as you're going forward to the students? Is that a lot of the reason why they come there is for that, you know, aspect? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Right. Um, if you're working in sport business, you're studying, <clears throat> excuse me, you're studying sport business or anything of the like typically you are interested in a sport uh and it's very easy to sell philly in that regard that given the fact oh basketball is your favorite sport well we have the sixers and at least yeah. you know we always have a student who is working for them in some regard or excuse we have had it before uh eagles football phillies baseball soccer union and so it makes it very easy to guide conversations in that regard um, for example, if a student is interested in sport analytics, I can have a conversation with them that we've had students intern with the Philadelphia Union's analytics department. And so then you can kind of take that conversation from there. So it is a very easy selling point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I imagine kind of touched on the selling point a little bit. What is, you know, maybe some of the, talking to alum and, you know, yourself, uh, what's kind of the favorite aspect of the program itself? Yeah, Sure. So favorite aspects of the program, besides the fact that it is very hands-on, I have always been a fact, or, 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 I've been a fan of the fact that the program is, uh, it is very community oriented. And that's been its mission, as I said, since its foundation. And the program 
there are about 90 students in it and it's very very hands-on it's very personalized and the curriculum is built in that your short and long-term goals are taken into account so there are advisors and there are other faculty and staff members even who are going to work with you throughout the entire time you're in the program to make sure that it is your own experience you know you are a member of the sport business program or you're a student in it and you are not just a number but rather you're your own individual with very specific goals and there are people whose job it is to get you from point a to point b yeah and just kind of touching on that i said a follow-up how do you how do you how do you think the professors the the admin yourself how do you cultivate such a community-based uh like program and feeling a little bit yeah definitely i think the best way to create that right is I think for one, there are so many opportunities for students to network um, Mm -hmm. with faculty members and with members of the industry. Um, There is the Center for Industry Engagement or CIE within the program um, and and students can use that to gain connections to to the industry. There are programming services offered by faculty members, right? And I think that kind of starts to bridge the gap where students can start to have more conversations with faculty members beyond just their regular scheduled class hours. I think that's when you really start to get into those deeper conversations about goal setting. And then, you know, you happen to be a part of a seminar um, from a guest speaker or from a faculty member, and then you get to talk to them about your own personal journey and who knows what can go from there. But I think that's a great way that, uh, that it's achieved. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's wonderful. And I think that's, you know, just in general, building that community. And if it's business, you know, sports related, just really anything, the community is such an important part of, you know, cultivating that in any industry, really. So that's, that's awesome that, you know, the program's doing such great things there. Um, and then yeah. regarding kind of the, the program itself, could you give the viewers and uh, listeners a little bit, um, you know, information about the class structure, how long it takes to, you know, complete the program, kind of that type of stuff? Yeah, definitely. So just to give a general overview of the program, the sport business program at Temple is, and I really want to stress, it is taught in a flexible format. So beyond the fact that it is personalized, it is flexible in that it can can be completed part-time or full-time, and you can complete the courses online or in person or with a hybrid format, contingent on your interests, location, and what it is exactly you're looking to do. the flexible format allows students then uh, to take classes throughout the uh, week, specifically at night. So we're talking normally like 5.30 to 8 or so. Um, and then the flexible format as well with the sport business program, there are four concentrations that I want to highlight. So we have sports analytics, recreation and event management, sports marketing and promotions, and athletic administration. And these concentrations all have their own required courses, but you can also elect to just take a breadth of coursework within all of the concentrations and not necessarily declare one or take a few classes in one and a few in another. Um, You can double dip, you know, if your job is a little bit of operations, but also you do a bit of marketing work, well, we can help you there. Um, the fifth option that we have is our dual degree option with Real Madrid University in Europe, and that is where students can earn their sport business degree, but also getting an MBA from Real Madrid. That one is the only one that's very structured in that your right. courses are pretty much outlined for you semester by semester, where you're with one institution one semester, another institution the next. Um, and you can't really elect to take another concentration or such because you are already elected into two different programs. Um, but the flexibility is very, very strong in the program overall um, and how it's designed. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I love the I love the flexibility. And that's it's awesome that the students can kind of, like you said, double dip, you know, a little here, a little there and kind of be flexible. And as, as you've heard, maybe some feedback from students, is there, you know, like a class or a crowd favorite class, or is there a class that like, has a lot of hype, anything? Yeah, definitely. Um, So I think first, the sports analytics uh, final portfolio 
Um, sports analytics is one of the more popular concentrations. And the final portfolio allows students to really um, just create this culmination of all of the work that they've done. And it's their last concentration class. And you are working alongside an expert faculty member and you're going to be taking this portfolio with you when applying for jobs. Um, right. There's been a tremendous success rate with that where students have been able to land a job following graduation using said portfolio with the work that they got to do in this last class. That's a huge hit. And I think it goes back to that hands-on learning and you're working directly with somebody who is an expert in the field yeah. that you are really diving into and breaking into. Um, I think specifically another class is a class, it's um, sponsorship and sales. Mm -hmm. And essentially what you can do um, is learn more about ticket sales and how the sales approach works for all sports organizations. And you can actually um, participate in a bit of a, it's a group project where um, you do ticket sales for a Phillies game. Um, and then everyone actually gets to attend, sends, gets to attend said game, um, which is really cool. And last year, I believe there were like 800 or so tickets sold. Wow. Um, so a, a good chunk. Um, so it, it, again, hands-on experience, um, mm -hmm. getting a bit of that like competitive edge because if you've ever played a sport, you have probably a bit of that competitive edge in you <laughs> to get to do that with us. Um, so it's it, it's a very fun uh, group project that that course offers, but I think those are some noteworthy ones. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I, I love the, you know, the grad school is awesome because it's like you're taking classes that you actually, you know, enjoy. It's not like a, you know, like a biology 200 class, you know, but then also like the real world applications and, you know, kind of getting, getting out there in the actual industry and working. So that, that, that Philly's, you know, project there sounds super cool. And, you know, that just stuff is super awesome for prospective students looking to go into, you know, a program like this is where so you can kind of get your hands dirty and get that experience. And you can possibly even put that type of stuff on your resume, you know? Oh, 100%. Yeah. And that's the best part, right? Um, all of these experiences make you more marketable as an employee. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you're getting a degree so you can make yourself the most marketable, competitive applicant, mm -hmm. candidate, and employee that you are for your role. Um, and I think the program does such a great job of not only teaching you theory, but practical based knowledge that you will be yep. using day to day in whatever role you choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that, that's important. And, and so we talked a little bit about the class. So now can you give us a little bit of background on professors? Um, you know, some, you know, if, if they're like adjunct professors, if they're, you know, working in sports and they come teach at night or is it like full time? Just kind of dive into that a little bit. Yeah. So um, so our professors and faculty members. Um, so we do have full time faculty members and we have faculty members who are um, they all kind of do things in their own field. Um, and that's mm -hmm. how we we're able to teach classes at night. And right. faculty members, um, I wanted to actually make this point um, at some point, so this is perfect. Temple's actually one of the most um, commonly published uh, research. The sports business department is one of the most commonly published um, departments for academic journals with our faculty members. We've had a few um, particularly in the fields of sports marketing, such as like NIL. Um, there's been a lot of research published from some of our faculty members who are not just teaching, but are they, they're doing actual things in the field. Um, and I think that blends itself very well, ultimately, to having that expert day-to-day -day experience and then coming and teaching at night. Definitely. Yeah, I, I know. And like I was saying before, I went to the ASU program and I think that as, a, as graduate school separates, kind of as I alluded to, you know, previously graduates separates itself from like an undergrad because your teachers are like, I feel like a little bit more you know, in the, in the industry, you know, just like a math teacher. And then they teach math and, but they're like, you know, they're like a GM or they were a vice president and they have like all these you know, experiences they can share to the students. So the fact that you, you know, the Temple program has, has that, I think is, you know, a huge benefit for mm -hmm. the students looking into the program. Definitely, yeah. And then, so talking about the students now a little bit more, uh, we talked about it earlier, um, just like the alumni, could you kind of give 
the listeners, the listeners, viewers here, maybe some, some teams, um, you know, jobs that the kind of, after they've graduated from this program where they've kind of ended up. Yeah, definitely. Um, so of course students have been fortunate enough to land jobs pretty much all across, um, Mm -hmm. the entire range of the sports industry and with, um, the professional sports teams in Philly. So we're talking Phillies, Eagles, Sixers, Union, um, as well as professional sports teams in New York, DC, uh, Florida, even Texas and California. Uh, And then students have also landed roles um, with the commissioner's office for NFL, as well as some of the head offices of Major League Baseball. A lot of times students want to break into front office roles for the NFL or MLB. And we have been uh, very fortunate enough to have our students land those careers. Um, Students also will work in uh, universities and working in collegiate Mm -hmm. athletics. Um, Students will work in not just at a university's athletics department, but may actually represent and work for the NCAA. Um, there is, um, uh, there is actually a year long, uh, contracted role that the NCAA has, um, for students more in athletic administration and Temple has been fortunate enough to have students, um, be accepted into this, um, very competitive nationally known year long, um, athletic administration entry level role, um, that really gets their foot in their door with the NCAA. Um, students have also worked in compliance at numerous universities and then have done operations and recruiting uh, for various schools. Um, and then even sports apparel companies, this is yeah. extremely popular. Um, students will want to want to work for Nike or Adidas, Under Armour. We've uh, had students work um, particularly maybe in the um, in sports marketing side. And then the Philadelphia um, Sports and Recreation Department, uh, that's namely another important one for recreation and event management. Uh, We'll have students work with the city and we'll have them also work with local nonprofit organizations that may work with underprivileged students in the greater Philadelphia area and helping to provide them with athletic programming. so those are, I think those are some very noteworthy opportunities yeah. that students have had post grad. No, yeah, of course, of course that yeah, that's great, and fantastic. So, and I, I think a lot of the times when people think of like, oh, I want to work at sports, do like an NFL team or an NBA team, but sports is such like a broad, you know, scope that there's so many things that you could do to still work in sports. You know, like you said, there's like Nike, there's people that have to make the jerseys, there's people who have to sell. The, like there's so much, so many jobs in sport in and of itself that you know getting a degree like this, you can really go to so many places. Like you, your, your opportunities are endless, I think. It, it is endless, exactly. I think, you know, with a sport business degree, you are looking to work in the realm of sports. And a lot of times you first think of working for a professional sports organization, but, mm-hmm. and while you still can, and while that is fantastic if you do, what's also great about it is that this program especially and with all the connections that the program has, you learn, as I was just mentioning, that there are a plethora of opportunities outside of organizations mm-hmm. that may be more of what you are looking for. Um, for example, there is a, um, it's a very niche um, company. It's a recruiting agency for sports business professionals. Mm-hmm. that's you know that could be something that you're interested in that you may just not be aware of at first um, right. and that you would mm-hmm. learn of while you're in the program um or working you know all in more of the compliance side and seeing things more in the back end of athletic administration i think there are so many opportunities that you may not be aware of at first that when you're in the program and you learn about it it could really be an eye-opening great experience yeah no i'm with you yeah i, I agree 100 percent there and then as you know, I to kind of you know go start over a little bit, but when the students mm-hmm. are applying to the program, you know, is, are there certain things I guess that you know can make a prospective student's you know application stand out, or are there certain things you you, you and the team look for? Yeah, definitely. 
So first and foremost, when a student is applying to the support business program, there is not a requirement in regard to experience in the sport business industry or a degree in sports business, sports management, whatever the case may be. Um, right. To get into the sport business program, um, really the thing that I look for and that the admissions committee is looking for uh, is really a passion and understanding and interest and having goals and understanding it is, what are you looking to achieve if you are obtaining a sport business degree? Ultimately, it is an investment um, for both mm -hmm. sides. So you want to make sure that it is a worthwhile investment and that you are you have an idea or an understanding of, you know, it doesn't need to be a specific role, but you mm -hmm. have taken the time to get an understanding of what the sport business industry is, what opportunities are out there, and maybe a general idea of a path you may want to follow. Articulating that in a statement of goals is always extremely important. This is more the more specific, the better. Um, right. Having experiences listed on your resume is always great. Of course, it's not required, as I mentioned, but if you have those experiences, you want to make sure you list them. Um, yeah, and then I think ultimately making sure that, again, everything is just there is a clear understanding of what it is you are looking to achieve. Even if you are a career changer, why are you changing careers? You know, um, mm -hmm. really being as transparent as possible uh, can only help you in this regard. Got it. Understood. And then regarding kind of the process, is are, is it like an essay? Are there uh, kind of video attachments? Like a little, yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah, it's a very straightforward application process. Uh, so just to outline it all. So there's an application that students will complete on our website. And mm -hmm. from there, we require essentially all transcripts, letters of recommendation. Uh, we will require the resume, as I mentioned, a statement of goals. So we'll just only require an essay. And that statement of goals is essentially what are your short and long term goals and how do you hope that the sport business program will achieve them for you? Or, um, and then uh, standardized testing. I always want to make sure I emphasize that because it's always asked. Um, we don't require it for uh, for students to be admitted into the program. And so ultimately, we're going to be looking at you just beyond the number, but really taking a holistic approach with that application. Okay, awesome. And then the standard of testing is you're referring to like the GRE or the GMAT, that type of stuff? Yes, correct, correct, yes. Uh -huh. uh, now, would that... I've always thought this is that, you know, say like a student does, you know, complete that and then put that in. Does that give any more, any less, um, I guess, like benefit to their application or is it still just, it's, it's more like you said, the holistic, it's, it's all of it. It's not just like that. It's, it's ultimately going to be holistic. Um, mm -hmm. However, if a student were to take the GRE or GMAT, they score a, you know, they have a certain score that they are proud of that may lend itself um, to being in a higher average or range, then that's always good for us to see, of course, because then we get a better understanding right. of their academic capabilities. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, but it's ultimately not going to strongly influence one way or the other. Um, another big part of the process is the admissions interview that mm -hmm. we will conduct with all qualified applicants. And so okay. that is normally about a half hour conversation where it is really understanding the applicant holistically uh, with their background, with their goals, with any experiences and achievements that they've had and how they are as a potential student in the program. That is really what is most important um, when it comes down to it. Got it. And is that more like a, I guess, like a second round, third round type of process, the, the interview? Yeah, exactly. It's the second final round. So the student will apply, we'll do the initial review to make sure they qualify for the program. And then we reach out and invite them to uh, essentially what we're doing right now is a um, half hour of a video Zoom call. Right. Okay. Understood. And then kind of touching on that a little bit, the interview, um, 
you know, I've I've had some I've gone back and forth on this, but how much should the the interviewee like know about? So like say like I'm talking to you like this, like do do I want to know like oh John worked here, he did this, and then like bringing that up, or is that like is there a line where it's like oh, this guy knows a little bit too much about <laughs> like my background, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. I will say it's quite funny, right? Ever since uh, I started working in this role, my LinkedIn yeah. views have gone up considerably. <laughs> Like it, it's it's been quite high um and i worked in undergraduate admissions uh for about four years prior to this and that was never a factor now it is in graduate admissions. um but um yeah i think it's i don't want to knowing me is good sure uh but right knowing the program and having an understanding of the program will uh will will ultimately I don't want to say look better, but knowing you have an understanding of what the sport business program at Temple has, that will be more impressive ultimately. Um, showing that you have done research as an applicant, showing that you have taken the time to peruse the website. Maybe you have researched what our faculty do. Maybe you have looked into uh, career outlooks in the program. If you know those things going into the interview, that is a sign of commitment that shows yep. a high level of interest. Um, doing research in me is good too, of course, but ultimately, um, it's not going to make much of a difference at the end of the day, whereas researching the program could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And I think that even goes, you know, with all the, all the first, you know, future interviews, you got to know the business, you know, the company, you know, kind of their mission statement or values, because you don't want to go into an interview and be like, you know, I like sports. Well, everyone likes, you know, all, everyone in this likes sports. Yeah. So that's not going to make you stand out in, in an interview, you know? Exactly. And and I think, you know, to say like, oh, I want to get into the sport business industry. I I researched sport business programs online and I found Temple and mm -hmm. I saw that yours is ranked this. Mm -hmm. That's great. But beyond that, what have you learned? Mm -hmm. Have you looked into course content? Have, like I mentioned, faculty really diving deep into it is uh, what matters. And I think, yeah. yeah, like going in and just understanding like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm with you. And then, um, you know, as, as kind of the students, you know, everyone takes, you know, this program and kind of goes forward. Um, are there certain goals or, you know, things that the program has, has you know, for the future uh, with, you know, admissions or just kind of anything like future goals for the program? Yeah, I think um, generally speaking, the biggest goal for the program and I this is a general answer but I think it is mm -hmm. a very important one in that is that Temple Sport Business Program is known for staying very up to date in trends in the sport business industry and what is currently happening in the market and I think that is reflected in the program and I think the goal and the mission of the program is to stay as up to date in course content, reevaluating it and uh, reflecting on it as need. Be. That in of itself is probably the biggest goal that the program has right now uh, that I could offer. Perfect. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, you know, I love to hear that I'm talking to different programs. So it's so beneficial. And then, you know, we appreciate you coming on today and talking. So we'll kind of close here with like a little no huddle. I was asking to ask you some short questions just so the viewers can kind of get a little bit more info about you. And then sure. after I ask these four or five questions, I'll just kind of the floor is yours. And if you want to plug any of the social medias, the websites, any uh, events coming up, then the floor is yours after, after the next few questions. So we'll just dive in here. Uh, if you could choose a favorite course in a program, uh, which one would you choose? If I could choose a favorite course, oh boy, the sport, the sport analytics final culmination, as I mentioned earlier, um, I am a data nerd on the side. I love fantasy sports, baseball in particular, and I've always been a sabermetrics nerd. Um, if I wasn't doing what I am right now, I'd probably be working in sport analytics. And I think being able to create a portfolio of your hands-on data-driven work, I, I don't think there's much cooler than that personally. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's probably my favorite course in the program. Good. And then uh, kind of on that same line, it's, what's your favorite book that you've e either read or are you reading now? Oh, boy. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, basic 
books, series, Game of Thrones, anything related to GOT, World of Price and Fire is amazing. Dune, read that when the movie came out. That's awesome. Um, uh, pretty niche, but I recently got into manga. In particular, there is this artist um, named Junji Ito, uh, who does like a lot of okay. horror-based manga. And uh, that is, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, he has a lot of work that I've been diving into recently. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll, have to, I'll have to take a look into some of that stuff. And uh, we, we appreciate you coming on today. So I'll just kind of floor is yours. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, well, it's been a pleasure uh, to have me on the podcast today. And so if anyone is ever interested in learning more about the sport business program at Temple University, or want to have a conversation with me about an application, Temple University, anything of the like, uh, they can reach out to me best at uh, Jonathan Campione. And so it's going to be Jonathan Campione at temple.edu. And so if you just Google Temple Sport Business, you can easily find us and my contact information on there. Um, that is the best way to reach me for anything related to the program uh, or if you want to learn more about Temple. And then from there, I'm always willing to have a conversation with students, um, talk about anything really. As I mentioned, I'm an alum of the university, and so I can speak both from an employee perspective, but also as an alum and uh, somebody who has lived in Philadelphia for 10 years now. So I look forward to any and all conversations uh, regarding this program. Um, and again, I definitely appreciate you having me on today, Connor. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And then we'll link, you know, we'll put your, your uh, information in there and we send out a newsletter each week to, to the listeners. So we'll put all the information regarding the Temple program in there for the listeners cool. there. Um, so hopefully you, we can connect, you know, you with some, some uh, you know, future students. And then if you have other students or alumni that you know, want to get connected with us, you know, we'd we'll, love to talk to them and maybe get them on the podcast as well. So we appreciate you stopping by today and yeah. looking forward to watch the program grow and see the, uh, the alumni that you, uh, the program produces. Much. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, you know what they say? It's all about who you know. And now, you know Jonathan Campione.